Companies are hiring fewer junior developers than ever. What does that mean for you? How can you advance your career in the age of AI? Well, this is a new series that aims to answer that question. I'm calling it Dev to Lead to Architect. And it's also the first episode that will be part of the new Don't Imitate Understand podcast, which means you can watch this on video or listen to the audio. So welcome. Um, for starters, I'll say that the idea for this came from coaching. I just started doing live coaching, which has been really, really interesting. I've been able to connect with students that have been watching courses for years, maybe even a decade. I've just had an anniversary of 10 years of courses uh, just last month. Maybe that's you. Uh, but many have been watching for years, and I've started live coaching uh, 60 minutes one-on-one -on -one or 90 minutes with a team. And it's been really interesting what the topics people want to talk about are. They haven't just wanted to talk about technical things. They've wanted to talk about leadership, about being an architect, about being a lead, about getting jobs in those roles. And I think part of that is because there's so much talk right now about how there are fewer job openings for junior developers. And what that means is, is that there's more opportunity for advancement as a senior developer becoming a technical lead, a dev lead, a, a product lead, or a full-on architect. So you might be worried about having the skills to present yourself in that way. So I want to give you a few tips to start with with this first episode because I think most of the people I've been talking to fall into one of three categories. Either you just have a goal of advancing your career, getting a job as a dev, or you're a dev and you want to become a senior dev, someone with experience, someone that recognized or is recognized for their knowledge and ability. Now, a second one is someone who's maybe just been around for a while and has been put into a lead role. Now, here's the problem with that. Most courses, tutorials, all these things that teach you to code don't teach you anything about being a lead, a dev lead, a dev manager, a product lead, an architect. That's a whole other skill set. It's attached to the skills of being a developer, but people are being put in these positions because they've been around a while and they don't feel like they really know what they're doing. Maybe that's you. And then a third one is those who are actively searching for work and the work that they're seeing is architect roles, lead roles, people that can manage. And that's not just because they can manage people, but with AI, with LLMs, multi-agent workflows, the idea of just being able to take the skills that you might use as a leader or an architect and apply it to AI is really powerful. Things like tax, task decomposition, being able to look at a problem and break it down, communicate it, spec it out, all these sorts of things, review code. So let's talk about three major skills that I think you need in order to become a technical lead and architect. So number one, deep understanding of the technology you're using. You need to know how things work. And in the age of AI, this is even more dangerous. It's, it's even easier to fall into what I call skill atrophy. You just use the AI to generate code and you never learn how it works. So more important than ever, you need to, this is my first tip, set aside time to hand code. Avoid skill atrophy. I know. It doesn't feel like you have time for that, but you need to do it. So the way I recommend doing it is hand code examples for the AI to then follow through the rest of the project. Figure out the structures, figure out the flow, how you want things to be structured in the file system, uh, what your standards are, how you'd like your functions to appear, how you'd like them to be segmented put in comments, make sure you've got your types started. And then that becomes context for the LLM. But it doesn't just become context for the LLM to pattern match against, which will get you better results, but it also 
is your chance to practice hand coding. So that's my first tip. Second tip, be curious about how things work. New things come out all the time. New technologies, revisions to previous technologies. Don't just learn them or, or pass documentation to the AI and say, now do this. Be curious about how things work. Make it a part of working and learning the tool to have some degree of understanding of how it actually works. Okay, the second area in advancing from dev to lead to architect that I'll give you as a tip in this episode. Communicate and coordinate. People is a skill that you need. How do you communicate with people? How do you coordinate people? And that applies to AI as well, because good communication and good coordination is going to get you better results from your LLM. So here's three tips. One, practice communication and coordination with an AI. AI is designed to mimic human responses. Tell it the kind of person you want it to be, the a junior dev who's having this difficulty, and communicate with it. Talk to it. Even if you have uh, one of the apps like ChatGPT that you can speak out loud, interact out loud verbally, uh, or pretend that you're sending email back and forth. Pretend that you're doing some kind of direct message. Practice with an AI. Number two, record yourself explaining something. I know that that sounds awful. A lot of people hate to do that. I've been doing that for 10 years as far as like I record myself and listen to it over and over and over again explaining things. And while that may feel kind of awful at first, it's so useful because that's what other people are listening to when you're explaining to them something. So take a code base and walk through a code base out loud and record yourself. Just take your phone or, or use a free screencasting utility or something. Record yourself. It doesn't have to be for a long time. See what it sounds like. Put yourself in the mindset of someone that doesn't know. What things did you assume instead of explain? And that can help you. And number three, practice task decomposition while coding. So while you're working on a project, instead of being like just a dev who gets a ticket, because really when we talk about moving from dev to lead to architect, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about moving beyond being just a coder that closes tickets. So that means when you go to work on code, practice task decomposition. Don't just jump into the fray. Don't just start coding. Plan. Do spec then plan, then implement. And that's actually a great way to get a good result from an LLM as well. All right, now before we move on to our third point, I'll make an announcement. So in this series, if there's any announcements to make, I'll just make a brief one. And I do have a brief one. There's a new course that's out. It's called Understanding Modern JavaScript Frameworks. Now talking about deep understanding, the idea is that there's an entire new vocabulary, a modern JavaScript vocabulary when it comes to building web applications, everything from hydration, resumability, signals, RPC, server functions, all of that. So I've released a new course. It's an early access. The first content's all already available where we dive into Spelt and Vue and Angular and React uh, and other frameworks like Tanstack Start and quick, and we go under the hood of how they work to break down each of those ideas so that you can understand how frameworks work and then apply that knowledge to any framework you're using or anyone you'll use in the future. You can apply a deeply deep understanding for debugging, for architecting as someone beyond just a ticket closer, but a lead or an architect for the future for advancing your career. So you can go to tonyalisea.dev slash jsframeworks or I'll put a link in the description in the show notes of this episode. All right, now, that's it for the announcement. Third thing, the third skill moving from dev to lead to architect is, I think, systems thinking. What is systems thinking? Well, systems thinking is thinking about all the pieces that go into a system to step back to get a big picture, a broad picture, and be able to understand how any change you make, any design, any choice that you make affects the entire system. So how do you build systems thinking skills? I'll give you again three tips. One, model before you build. So what does that mean? 
Well, that means, again, instead of just jumping into the code, stop and model the impact, the effects of the entire system. Model how this is all going to come together. And you could do that on a piece of paper, or you could do that on a digital whiteboard. Uh, you could do that on a physical whiteboard, whatever the case is, but draw out what you're doing first. That is practice of both communication and task decomposition and assigning work because as a lead or an architect, you're going to have to communicate with others. You're going to have to assign work at times and you need to know what work to even assign and be able to express the intent of the architecture to express what we're going to build, how, and why. So model before you build. Number two, Try mapping a single interaction on an app that you're working on all the way. And when I mean all the way, I mean from the user, what are they doing? What are they thinking before they click the button? What's their goals? What's their obstacles? Then they click the button, map the entire process technically all the way through the stack and all the way back until you get to the point where the user gets some kind of feedback from the UI. Map all of that and then include in the map at each step, at each stage of the stack, how the team interacted with the software at that point. What was their touch points of the software for the database, for an API, if you're using an API, for the front end, whatever the case is, look at it as a holistic system from user to coder. Try mapping out just one interaction that way and see if that doesn't change how you think about a system. And the third thing is anticipating side effects. What does that mean? Well, what will slow down the user, the coder, the software? What will break potentially somewhere else, somewhere else in the system? You know, feature flags aren't enough to say that nothing will ever break as a result of a new feature. I've seen cases where something was put behind a feature flag, but it touched other parts of the system. If it touches a table that some other part of the system reads from, that feature flag doesn't matter. It won't protect that other piece of the system from potentially being broken. So think about side effects. And side effects are also about your team and the coding process. What's hard on the team now? What might be hard later? What might be difficult to debug? What might be difficult to refactor? What might be difficult to understand when the team has some churn and new people come in? All of those things are important. So deep understanding, communicate and coordinate with people and systems thinking. Those are my three tips for moving from dev to lead to architect. And in the rest of this series, we're going to talk more about that more in depth on all of these topics and more. So thanks for listening to episode one. And again, this is part of the Don't Imitate, Understand podcast. And if you want to book a coaching session for yourself or for your entire team, or you'd like to grab Understanding Modern JavaScript Frameworks, which is an early access, then you'll find links in the description and the show notes for this episode. All right. Happy coding, and I hope you have a great time as you upskill from dev to lead to architect. And if you have any questions or thoughts about that process, let me know. Talk to you later, and see you next time.